Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at the RE100 Nightingale. And before we begin, I just want to tell you that I'm sorry for how still and stiff this figure is going to be throughout the review and not particularly interesting to look at, especially during the lore sections. It is a massive model and I'm not exactly able to fit it on my spinning turntable display stand, so it's just kind of stand there for a while. This is one of my all-time favorite models, just on pure looks and lore and just everything about it. I just absolutely love this kit. Now, that's not to say that there aren't a couple downfalls and downsides to this kit, but I do feel like it gets a bad rap online just because it is, it is a brick. I'll be honest, it is a bit of a brick. But if you can take that into account, there is so much more to love about this. Now, just to start, let me give you some basic info on this kit. Its official name is the MSN-0411 Nightingale. The model line number is RE100 number 1. It was released on September 13, 2014 for 8,000 yen. And it's widely available, though it's not always the easiest model to find. I bought it on the fourth floor on a gunpla shop in the Wan Neon building in downtown Taipei. It took me about 3 hours and 43 minutes to complete, and as of right now, I have done no modifications, no stickers, no panel lining at all to this kit. Now, as for the lore behind this model, there is a lot to dig into. To begin, it's an alternate interpretation of the MSN-04 Sazabi that was in Mo Mobile Suit Gundam Char's Counterattack, Beltorchica's Children. That was the manga series that was Tomino's original interpretation of how he wanted the series to be. Uh, to be. Uh, the, mo sorry, the suit was personally commissioned from Anheim Electronics by Char Aznable and was designed specifically for his new type abilities and superb piloting skills and was painted in his trademark red color scheme and has his insignia. The suit contains a psycho frame, just like the new Gundam, and is synonymous with new type suits all around. The suit also includes 10 fun uh, funnels, a mega beam rifle, a pair of Vulcan cannons, a beam cannon, two beam sabers, a shield which carries a beam saber tomahawk, and several micro missiles as well as a pair of hidden arms mounted behind the front skirt armor, a pair of back-mounted armor veneer binders to ensure the large suit's high mobility, and five propellant tanks, three on the backpack and three underneath the rear skirt armor, to fuel its large number of thrusters. Now, the pilot of this suit, as I said, is Char Aznable, and as much as I'd love to get into all of the lore behind him, that's going to be saved for a number of future videos. But what I will tell you about is where he is in this specific moment of the gun block, sorry, the Gundam cannon. After being presumed to be either dead or missing, Char did not appear in the sequel to Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, but uh, Mobile Suit Double Zeta, because Gundam, but Gundam creator Yoshikui. Yoshiyuki Tomino has stated officially that he had originally intended to feature Char in Double Zeta, but the plan was cancelled when he was granted, granted the go-ahead with the theatrical feature Char's counterattack. This is the alternate interpretation of how it would be, with the Sazabi being how it was realized in the Char's counterattack official theatrical release, while the Nightingale is how it was interpreted in the Beltorchica's Children manga and novels. In the story, five years have passed since the events of Double Zeta, before Char returned in the movie Char's Counterattack, as the leader of the revived neo Zeon faction. The opening scenes of the movie show his intention to drop the massive asteroid base Axis into the Earth, forcing a dramatic increase in migration of its population into space, 
which he believes will force all of humanity to evolve into new types. Only one thing stands in his way, the Earth Federation's Londo Bell Task Force, led by his former superior and ally Bright Noah and the Londo Bell's top ace pilot and his old arch rival and comrade during their Ayuk days, Amuro Ray. I found all this information while doing research on the Gundam Wikia as well as reading Beltorchka's children, the manga. I would highly suggest it to anyone who's interested because not only is it a fantastic manga in its own right, it's inter interesting to see the changes that Tomino originally wanted to go with when it came to how he wanted to end his story, at least in terms of the main early Universal Century arc predating Unicorn and all of those. Now, if you're as interested in things about thematic pairing or display uh, quality as I am, I'm gonna highly recommend, if you're gonna buy this kit, also buy either the Master Grade High New Gundam Verka or the original High New, which is underrated in its own right, and I might take a look at that in the future. Because that is the canonical pairing and duel that this model would be given. Um, if you had the Sazabi, you would go ahead with the regular new Gundam for Ka. But really, you can't match how beautiful these two kits look if you put them side by side with the high new Gundam. Now, an alternate would be, if you want to look, try putting it next to the Sazabi, so you can get a kind of Char alternate universe look to it. It can look quite well together. Now, the build process for this model was relatively easy. Most of the runners you get with this kit are massive, but at the same time, most of your time is going to be spent just plugging in those thrusters, um, putting in the the funnels, just putting it all together. So overall, it is a relatively easy build. Now, when it comes to the stickers, they're beautiful, but they are going to look strange just on the plastic, or they are they're not going to stick as well as if they were water slide decal. Now, when speaking about the articulation of this kit, as I mentioned earlier, it is the biggest downfall of this kit. There's not a lot of movement and posability is going to be virtually nothing with this kit. The arms do swivel, they do bend, so at least that is good. The biggest problem with them you're gonna get is when trying to balance the weight of the accessories such as the weapons and the shield. The hands are your standard master grade hands where they are individually articulated and can bend and they do a relatively decent job of grasping the weapons as needed. These little shoulder units don't budge at all, but at least with the wings they hold in solidly and you can twist them around, but they just kind of plug in, you're not going to be able to dangle them in any way. When it comes to the legs, one of the good benefits you get of this is you get these little toe bends, but at the end of the day they're not really going to be of any use because once you get this thing standing, you're not going to be able to bend the knees, you're not really going to be able to do anything as much because posing is going to be inhibited by the tail on the back. Now, all the side skirts are able to move not that great, not as much as other kits, but at the same time there is movement in them and you will be able to move them up and move them down. When it comes to the tail unit, luckily you get a little stand in the back that helps, so it is able to hold it in place for you so it doesn't dangle around. The thruster units on the back do not move in any way. Now, when it comes to the head, this is probably the most severely limited of all the articulation. You get a little bit of movement, but there's not really any up or down or side to side. The accessories are massive and the model struggles to hold it up. If you take a look at this gun, it's actually larger than the model itself if you can actually believe that. 
The shield is actually well modeled and I really like it. And it fits snugly into the back of the arm, but it is quite heavy. And it, you're gonna pull the arm out with it. You are gonna struggle with that in terms of just being able to put in any kind of relatable pose. Now, you get a beam saber effect that is quite similar to, it's almost exactly the same as that of the Sazabi for Ka, but on a larger scale, I believe. Um, they fit into the axe, which actually fits right into the back of the shield, which is very nice. So if you can swing it, you can get the shield with the effect parts coming right out, which is a very cool look. So, final thoughts. Overall, as I said before, I do love this kit. It does have severe issues when it comes to articulation. So if posing and everything are an extremely necessary thing for you, then this may not be the kit for you. And the price tag can be a little hefty, but just considering the background behind it, considering the, just the general look behind it, and it's Char. Who doesn't love a good Char model? I would highly recommend it. It does take up a lot of shelf room, but it has a dominating presence on there if you can get it up there. And if you can find the P Bandai funnel effects, those will make this look beautiful. So overall, I would highly recommend just know what you're getting into. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Gundamu, Gundamu. Schmo da 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 da